dangerous as set down by the law givers of the state, the legislature. And therefore, when we move it into the realm of the soul, we want to know what that is because obviously Congress doesn't convene in our soul. Temperate, we don't use that word too much. But what he calls it, he says it's a concord and harmony. Notice what it does, just what we were doing here. See, this is temperance. When? Where the better part rules the worst. It's stretched through the whole of us. As a result, the temperate part or this high-spirited part in joining with the ruling part of the soul brings about a unanimous mind as to what rules. Therefore, this word itself, temperate, we could really change because no one uses the word temperate in that way. So I'm going to put a little brackets around it and then change it. In the same way, courage is not something that you're willing to risk for something higher. It's a power. So it too has a peculiar definition in the Republic. Wisdom. How best to behave to itself. Right? Wisdom is good counseling. For what purpose? How best to behave to itself. If there's a part of the state where we can talk about rulers being wise, then they can demonstrate that wisdom by being able to show how the rulers, therefore, can deal with the whole, how to best behave towards the city as a whole, as well as other states. And it presupposes that it has a knowledge of what is to its advantage. It's only wise because it has that knowledge. Temperate. It also, see, there must be something about temperance. There must be something that tells what is the better part. That's a knowledge. Now, justice. What does he mean by justice? We are going to go back to this idea of temperate. Temperate develops a unanimous mind as to what rules and that it should rule and it should continue to rule. Look what happens with justice in the Republic. Justice is that every part, every part of it or every person is doing precisely what it should do and nothing else. Therefore, it's a rule of the self. It's a proper rule of oneself. If you know what you really should be doing, then you're, you're, you are a ruler and you are acting justly. As a consequence, you can set all in order. You become a friend to yourself. The whole soul then or the state is all in tune. You know what you've done? Therefore, you have made yourself or the city-state one out of many. Remember, unanimous mind? Justice, therefore, is the way to make a oneness out of a many. Now, the practice and what preserves this condition in the soul and works along with it, that's wisdom. See? That's the knowledge. It's the knowledge that presides over this practice. That's what wisdom is. So justice and wisdom are merged, aren't they? Justice and wisdom are merged. And equally well, would you not agree, that also brings about a unanimous mind. And therefore, the thing that's curious about this whole thing is courage. Courage. 
And that's our task. Let's see if I can build a mystery out of it. How can this become a learning? How can this become a practice? Well, let's take a look. If each part of this, right, if each part of the soul is then functioning in its proper way, then it can rule itself, then it can set all in its proper order, then desire is willing to be ruled by temperance, so the high-spirited part is willing to be temperate. Temperance then becomes an ally to reasoning. The high-spirited part becomes an ally to reasoning. And the desires, therefore, are completely consistent one with the other. But look here. We've got to build a mystery out of this. How do, you make, how do you make yourself one out of many? Well, there's a practice that preserves this condition in the soul and works along with it. Justice, uh, that presupposes a wisdom, which is a knowledge that presides over this practice. So then, if that's the case, let's see now if we can build this mystery. Or build it into a mystery, because we may not yet have it. There is a practice. There's a practice that preserves the condition of the soul. What practice is that preserves the condition of the soul? Well, it presupposes a knowledge, doesn't it? It presupposes a knowledge. It presupposes a knowledge. That knowledge presides over this practice. Right? It's over it. Right? It's over this practice. Oh, we're going to call that wisdom, aren't we? What practice? It's nice to have the practice, but what's the practice? Well, it's a certain knowledge that presides over this practice. What's this practice that it presides over? Oh, each part must be doing what is proper for it and nothing else. Well, how do you determine what part is going to be doing? How do you determine the proper part for each part of the soul? What is the proper role for each part of the soul. To rule itself. How do you rule itself? Well, I know. You have to have knowledge of what is to its advantage. That's what you need. But wait a minute. How do you determine what's to your advantage? Oh! <laughs> oh! The way you can tell what's to your advantage is when you find that the mind is unanimous as to what rules. No, because that bypasses the question, doesn't it? Louder? How do you know what's to your advantage? Well, so far we haven't been told. And how to find it and reach it. Huh. Yeah. Ah, look here. The proper role is that the better part should rule. How? How? By doing what? 